Reno Broadcasting Company presents Transcribe the Magnificent Montague, starring Marty Woolley. <laughs> Edwin the Magnificent Montague is back home in New York after a grueling visit to Hollywood to make a picture which was never made. He can now settle down to the life he loves, recalling his past glories on the Shakespearean stage with his old fellow actors. This idyllic existence is marred only by the economic necessity of his having to degrade himself five times a week as Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon radio program. It is the morning after the Montague's arrival from California. Lily, his wife, and Agnes, the maid, are getting the apartment back in order. Montague is still asleep. Agnes is vacuuming. Cleaner. What is it, honey? Agnes, the apartment has been empty for two months. We'd better get a woman in to help us clean. Who needs a woman? We need a man with a bulldozer. <laughs> this New York dirt is impossible. Did you get a load of the living room floor? I don't know whether to sweep it or plant it. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as that. It ain't, huh? Have you been in the kitchen and looked under that sink? Well, what do you need to clean it out? A hunting license. <laughs> I tell you, it's big game country under there. We'll have to get the kitchen in order. How will you get Edwin's breakfast? I'll just pick it off the tree that grew in the garbage can while we were away. <laughs> oh, come now, Agnes. We're home. Remember, Edwin was unhappy in Hollywood. He was a lost soul. Imagine a heel having a lost soul. <laughs> Agnes, be reasonable. After 25 years, you still don't understand Edwin. He's gruff and biting only because he's afraid people will discover his secret. That he's really a warm, soft-hearted man. He is, huh? Well, it's the best-kept secret since Radar. <laughs> oh, Agnes, you really like him. Now, you'd better get some coffee ready for him. I hear him getting up. There he is, the hound of the Baskervilles. <laughs> he's just vocalizing. Ah, uh, here I am, back in New York. Or am I still dreaming? Good morning, Edwin. Lily, my lovely Lily. And Agnes, how is our beautiful Agnes this morning? He's still dreaming. <laughs> Edwin, I've never seen you so happy. Well, Lily, I'm home. Back in our little apartment. I can breathe again. Ah, the old familiar air. It should be familiar. It's the same air you exhaled the day we left. <laughs> Agnes, dear, let's not mar my homecoming with those jokes you picked up in the men's smoker on the train. <laughs> Edwin, we're all happy to be back, but still there's something to be said about California. I know. I could be arrested for saying it. <laughs> now, Edwin, it's beautiful out there. Oh, those poor desolate palm trees on Hollywood Boulevard, whose dying leaves seem to be whispering... Who needs this? Why don't they take us back to Florida? <laughs> Edwin, this business about Hollywood has become an obsession with you. I loved it out there. It's beautiful, warm, and above all, clean. Look at the dirt in this apartment. Beautiful New York dirt. Look out the window, Lily. Isn't it romantic? The first slush of the year. And the garbage truck. Busily collecting garbage from one street and dumping it on the next. Oh, Lily, Lily, it's New York. Edwin Montague is home. Oh, give me a home where the cockroaches roam. Agnes! <laughs> really, you're both like children. Well, Lily, I feel 20 years younger. Well, you're certainly acting it. Agnes, will you get the coffee? Oh, no, you're not sending me into that kitchen alone. <laughs> Agnes, stop being silly and get the coffee. Okay, here I go into the kitchen. Simba! Simba! <laughs> oh, that Agnes. She's a female Milton Bell. Uh, it's good to be alive and 3,000 miles away from Hollywood. Edwin, will you stop that? People were lovely to us out there. The least you can do is drop the subject. Well, Lily, darling, I'm sorry. Gat, honey, if I thought you were taking my raving seriously. Well, Edwin, sometimes you overdo things. Well, I know. I wouldn't be the greatest Shakespearean actor in the last 25 years if I didn't overdo things. <laughs> oh, Edwin, you're impossible. 
Now sit down and get ready for breakfast. You'll be late for your broadcast. You know, I'm even looking forward to seeing Springer and Zinzer at the radio station. Uncle Goodhart rides again. Uh, by the way, Edwin, do you remember what today is? Friday. Look at the calendar. All right. Well? Well, it's still Friday. Hi, Lily. Never mind. Uh, Agnes, the coffee. Now, Lily, what is today? Edwin, if after all these years you don't remember, never mind. Today. Today. Oh, of course. Fifteen years ago today, we opened in Buffalo in Romeo and Juliet. It's not that. Well, then what is it? Never mind. Agnes! Lily, will you stop acting so cute and coy? That sort of thing went out when Shirley Temple had her baby. <laughs> Edwin, if, if it's of so little importance to you that you don't care to remember... Lily, Lily, of course. Your birthday. But that's in June, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, Lily, in heaven's name, what's today? Never mind, Edwin. I don't want to hear another word about it. Uh, neither do I. Good. Is it Arbor Day? <laughs> no. St. Swithin's Day? No. Labor Day? No. Now, Edwin, stop this. It's Friday. That's all you have to know. Good. Good. Good Friday? <laughs> now, really, Edwin, I'm, I'm sorry I brought the whole thing up. Here's your coffee. Thank you. Hey, what's going on here? From the kitchen, it sounded like Abbott and Costello on a bad night. <laughs> Never mind, Agnes. Yes, don't stop me now, Agnes. I'm on the jackpot question. <laughs> Lily, please. Lily, Edwin, if you don't remember it, then it's pointless. Lily, stop doing this. You're driving me out of my mind. Honey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> Agnes, I'm warning you. I'll get the door. It's Mr. Jarvis of the Proscenium Club. Jarvis! Montague, Montague, my old companion of the stage. Lord Hamlet has joyfully returned from Hollywood. Sound the kettle drums and let the trumpets thus spray out the triumph of this day. Let the darkness spread asunder and let once more fortune smile on Elsinore. He's trying to say hello. Oh, quiet, Agnes, quiet. Hello, hello, old friend. Montague, hello, Lily. Hello, Jarvis. It's good to see you again. Now, Montague, you must tell me, did you like California? Uh... Edwin! <laughs> now, don't start that again. Uh, Jarvis, when we are alone, I will make your hair stand on end. Your fellow Shakespearean actors and I at the club were saddened by the news that you didn't make that motion picture of Macbeth. It was all for the best, Jarvis. I refuse to let them despoil the name of Shakespeare. We read in the daily newspaper something about your being suspended by the studio. What means this Lord Hamlet? It means that Lord Hamlet was bounced out on his ear. <laughs> You must forgive, Agnes. The poor girl hasn't been the same since she started skating without a helmet in the roller derby. <laughs> Edwin, stop being ridiculous. Come, Agnes, let's finish unpacking. Coming, Mother. Well, darling, how are things at the Presidium Club? The last refuge for actors who still carry the torch of Shakespeare. We were all a little tense until we heard you'd indeed return from Hollywood. So many have deserted the stage to remain there, lured by its money. Ah, but not you, Montague. Not I. Hollywood, no. Jarvis, it is an intellectual desert. The indignities I suffer. I couldn't walk on the street without being chased by autograph seekers. Ah, then they knew the magnificent Montague. They thought I was someone called Gabby Hayes. <laughs> Gabby Hayes? Now, let me see. There was a Hayes who played in Julius Caesar with me. Uh, he... <laughs> Jarvis, this isn't the one. How are my faithful colleagues at the club? As usual, King Winters emerged victorious in its fight with the club's old oil heater. That isn't fixed yet? No, but we have high hopes of raising the money. How? Last Tuesday, while on his way to uh, the Social Security office, old guy Teasdale had a lucky fall on the ice in front of a very solvent restaurant. <laughs> Not again. Please, they are ready to make a settlement. 
He's promised that everything over three hundred dollars goes to the club. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, by the way, Jarvis, is today any special day? What is today? What a strange coincidence! A coincidence? Yes, this very morning, Sir Oliver asked me the very same question. The same question? Yes, it created quite a discussion among the members. We looked it up. What did you find out? It's Friday. <laughs> Her job is it's something besides Friday. Something important. Why don't you ask Lily? Well, she won't tell me. Lily is making life miserable for me. Hey, what do you want me to do with these Hollywood sports shirts your wife bought for you and you never wore? Burn them. How about this one with the dirty words on them? <laughs> Agnes, that's French. Toujours l'amour. Toujours l'amour. Still sounds dirty. Uh, wait a minute, Agnes. Yeah? Agnes, you must help me. Why? Agnes, please, it's very important to me. What is today? You mean you don't know? No. You beast! Jarvis, we must find out. If I can be of any help, you can. Go down to the clubhouse. Bury yourself in the library. Look through every old theater program and every play Lily and I starred in. Somewhere, something happened on Friday that's very important. Go. I fly. In the words of Macbeth, to horse, to horse. And let us not be dainty and leave taking, but shift away. I go. Here's the door. I must know what this day means. I, in the words of Lord Hamlet, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of. Jarvis, hurry. A horse, a horse. My kingdom for a horse. Oh, Jarvis, we haven't time. Take the subway. <laughs> Goodbye, Jarvis. I'm depending on you. So cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. Edwin, you're still home. You're going to be late for your broadcast. Yeah, my broadcast. Well, here's your coat. Lily, please, before I go, what is today? Edwin, I'm sorry I brought it up. If it's so unimportant to you... Oh, no, Lily, please. Hurry, Edwin. Goodbye. Friday. Friday. I know Lily. I don't remember. It's going to be Black Friday. Back with a magnificent Montague in just a moment. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tomorrow, the NBC Symphony will be heard in the third of the Saturday concert series under the baton of celebrated maestro Arturo Toscanini. Widely acclaimed as the outstanding musical event of the year, these one hour performances are proudly brought to you every Saturday on NBC. For tomorrow's broadcast, Maestro Toscanini has chosen Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream, and as a featured work, the Magnificent Symphony No. 2 by Brahms. And now, back to The Magnificent Montague. And so ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart. And until he meets you again tomorrow in his little cottage on the sunny side of the lane... Here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When a burglar holds a gun to your head after into your house he came creeping, don't shout or yell and make him shoot. Remember, your neighbors are sleeping. <laughs> the air, Mr. Montague. Good. Another great program, Mr. Montague. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me sick. <laughs> well, you're just modest. Oh, here's our director. How did you like the show, Mrs. Inder? Oh, it was a rip, snort, and lollop all over, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. It's sure swell having you back, Mr. Montague. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he did all right with them Hollywood bathing beauties, eh, Zinzer? Ooh, huh? <laughs> How about it, Mr. Montague? Are you glad to be back? Well, I was until just now. <laughs> now, stop this babbling. Babbling? Was somebody babbling? I didn't hear anyone babbling. Zinzer, were you babbling? Babbling? I wasn't babbling. Who was babbling? Wait. Mr. Montague said someone was babbling. I wasn't babbling. I didn't hear it. Stop, stop. Dad, it sounds as if somebody opened the door of a pet shop. 
Well, we're just happy to see you back, Mr. Montague. Yeah, I was just saying to my wife the other morning, it, it's sort of quiet around the studio without the old goat. Don't hit me. <laughs> oh, no. No, since I'm not hitting anybody today, but remind me about it tomorrow. Gad, I woke up so happy about being back home. Now this thing on my mind, Friday. Friday. Something happened on Friday. Somebody did something on Friday. Somebody did something? Who did something? Zinza, did you do something? Me? I didn't do anything. Did somebody do something? Stop! <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm trying to think. Can I have one minute of silence? Let us say it's in memory of Zinza's brain. <laughs> Mr. Montague, something's troubling you. Maybe we can help you, Mr. Montague. All right, all right. Now think. What does Friday mean to you? Fish. <laughs> Mr. Zinza, I would have been horribly disappointed if you had come up with any other answer. Thank you. Why is today supposed to be a very special day, Mr. Montague? Well, for me it is. For some reason, this is a very special day for me. Is it your birthday? No. Is it your wife's birthday? No. Have you got a dog? No. If you had a dog, would it be his birthday? <laughs> if I had a dog... <laughs> Ah, Zinza, I see you've been a good boy while I was gone. You've been taking your ignorant shots. <laughs> if I had a dog, mm. would it be his birthday? I'm sorry. I guess I was just carried away by the excitement. It was just like a quiz show. <laughs> ah, Zinza, a coffee company would pay a fortune if they could find out the secret of your vacuum-packed head. <laughs> Now concentrate. Friday. My wife said this was a special day. Hey, Fourth of July is on a Friday. Thank you. Give this man six silver dollars and a smash in the face. <laughs> I can only remember the date. Same thing happened to me. My wife got sore because I couldn't remember. Friday. What could it be? Why, she was sore as a boil when I didn't remember. It was our wedding anniversary. <laughs> Zinza, please, I'm not interested in your wedding anniversary, Friday. What can be so special about wedding, uh, wedding, wedding anniversary? I, <laughs> Mr. Martin. Uh, that's it. I love you truly, truly, dear. Zinza, just don't stand there. Run for a doctor. Can't you see what's happening? Golly, he snapped just like that. <laughs> you idiot. Don't you know what today is? The most wonderful day in the world. My 25th wedding anniversary. Congratulations, Mr. Montague. Gee, married 25 years. You must be about... Uh, never mind my age. <laughs> never mind. I was a boy bride. <laughs> Lily and I married 25 years. We've never gone out on an anniversary. Zinza, what did you do on your wedding anniversary? We went to Howard Johnson. <laughs> That's where we first met. Yeah. Well, how about you, Springer? Where did you meet your wife? She was my secretary. <laughs> ah, those were the days. Hmm. Well, where can I take Lily for our anniversary tonight? The wife and I'd be glad to have you over tonight. Thank you, Zinza, but a wedding anniversary, I I'd like something more exciting. Well, if it's excitement you want, it takes no time at all to whip out our card table and the canasta cards. <laughs> oh, that's too exciting. But it was very kind of you, Zinza. Say, why don't you surprise your missus like I did a few years ago on our anniversary? What happened? I didn't tell her where I was taking her. Just got on the 23rd Street ferry over to Hoboken, took a bus from there to Union City, New Jersey, and took her in to see a burlesque show. <laughs> a burlesque show. <laughs> boy, oh boy, what a night. She didn't talk to me for a year. <laughs> No, I've got to take Lily to some place special. I haven't taken her out since our first wedding anniversary 25 years ago. We went to a wonderful little Viennese cafe in Greenwich Village. It was called uh, the Kleiner Schnitzelbank. There was Viennese music. Jarvis, who was my best man, was there, and that's it. That's where I'll take Lily again. Where's the telephone? I'll call Jarvis. He's right here, Mr. Montague. Jesus is romantic. <laughs> thy help turn in thy fearful park, be helped in thy so summon the rock thy prayer. Hello? Hello? Uh, Jarvis? Uh, Montague. What? No, forget about looking up the date. I've got it. 
Jarvis, today is my wedding anniversary. Yeah. Well, here's what we're doing tonight. I'm having a party at that little cafe just as we did 25 years ago. Everything the same. Same friends, champagne, waltzes. Uh, be in front of the club in five minutes. I want you to go down to Greenwich Village with me, and we'll make all the arrangements for tonight. Goodbye, Jarvis. Have a good time, Mr. Montague. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, boys, thanks. I've got to run. Oh, how we danced on the night we were wet. <laughs> Montague, are you sure this is the place? I'm positive. I remember the address, and it's the same building. But Montague, look at the name. Gad. The Cuckoo Club. It changed the name, I guess. Let's go in. Here's the door. Well, what was that? Oh, the doorbell. There's no one in here. I guess they haven't opened yet. It's changed. Doesn't look anything like the Kleiner Schnitzel Bank. Oh, uh... Here's the door. That's his manager. Well, I'll knock. Come in. I'm inquiring. Be with you in a minute, boys. I'm on the phone. Now, look, Max, you're the chef here. You got to come in tonight. What do you give me with what the doctor says? Somebody's got to be here to cook the food. All right, all right. So let's say the doctor is right. So you got the measles. You're going to be in the kitchen. No one will see you. <laughs> okay. Okay, have it your way. You're letting me down, Max. So long. That's help for you these days. The cook gets measles right away. He takes the night off. Tell me, Mr... The name's Rocco. Oh, thank you. Tell me, Mr. Rocco, was this place known as Decliner Schnitzel Bank? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, bud. This is a respectable place. <laughs> you don't understand. I know we had a little trouble here two months ago, but don't go believing what they're saying around the newsstand. Please. All I meant was 25 years ago, this place was called Decliner Schnitzel Bank. Oh, kid. I didn't know that. When I took it over, it was called Kitty's Tea Shop. There was a little shooting, and they lost their liquor license. How unfortunate. We came over here on the chance that... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, boys. We got all the waiters we need. Waiters? <laughs> Mr. Rocco, we came here to arrange a little party for the night. Oh, oh. customers. Seen our ad and flair, huh? I <laughs> know. Uh, no, you see, this place has certain memories for us. This is Jarvis, president of the Presidium Club. Oh, you want a smoker, huh? Well, this is the place. You don't... I'll give you a fair shake, three bucks a head. It entitles you to a good spaghetti and meatball dinner, paper hats, noisemakers, whatever kind of entertainment you boys bring in, I don't want to know about it. <laughs> You're on your own. I'll give you the key, lock up, when you're through. <laughs> and that's not quite it. Okay. Okay, you got me over a barrel. Two and a half bucks a head, and you two get a kickback on all this. <laughs> Mr. Rocco, I'm trying to explain. This is a wedding anniversary. A wedding anniversary? Why don't you say so? We'll give our special wedding dinner. Four bucks a couple. Fruit cocktail, veal cutlet a la cuckoo club, a <laughs> sweet tomato sauce, and ferns all over the place. Oh, that's not exactly... And I've got just a singer for you, Hot Lips Lupo. <laughs> Give me here, I love you truly, done and bop. Man, it's real gone. Uh, Mr. Rocco, just listen. When my wife and I celebrated our first anniversary back here in 1926, this place was a lovely little Viri's cafe. It is a memory that is precious to my wife and me. A memory of our dearest friends being around us, of Viennese waltzes, of good wine, of love, friendship, and warmth. This is the memory I want to recreate for my wife and friends tonight. This is why we are here, Mr. Rocco. <laughs> Mr. Rocco! That's, that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard about this dump. Oh, please control yourself. An old silver-haired couple. Oh, no. This calls for a drink. Uh, never mind. I got it right here. Drink up. It's on me. No, thanks. No, thank you. I'll drink for all of us. <laughs> to the 25th anniversary of the most beautiful old couple in New York. <laughs> Mr. Rockwell, 
if we could fix up the places so it looks a little like it once was. Anything, anything you want. I'll lock the place up for you. I won't let any of my clientele in. Who needs those bums? I need a drink. <laughs> if we can get some Viennese music. Viennese music. My favorite music. Never a crash, you know. Watch it. It's the most beautiful. And now, please, uh, please, please, about the food. My wife will cook it. My wife. I was married five times. I never even had one anniversary. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. I'll call today. Here's the phone. Uh, Jarvis, it'll be the, uh, the old Schnitzel Bank again. With you there, my best man, and all our old friends. I won't tell Lily what it is. It'll be a surprise. See? Hello? Lily? It's me, darling. Still calls her darling. Darling, I am growing old, uh, Mr. Rockover. Lily? Uh, no, that wasn't me. It, no, it wasn't. So I must have had some money going. <laughs> no, Lily, I'm not in a bar. I'm phoning for a drugstore. But I know it sounds like it. Everybody's drinking header call or something. <laughs> now listen, Lily, don't ask questions. Just meet me at 232 Sheridan Square at 8 tonight. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the bank. Quiet. Lily, I'm going into a lot of trouble. Don't ask questions. Just be here at 8 o'clock. <coughs> Done, Jarvis. Let's get busy. Oh. How we dance on the night we were wet. <laughs> now wait a minute. Wait a minute. All the music. What is it? It's almost eight o'clock. <laughs> Lily should be here any minute. Quiet, everybody. I, I got all the lights turned out in front like you said. Good. She won't know what's going on. <laughs> so beautiful. Uh, now, please, now, please, Jarvis. Are all the guests seated just the way they were 25 years ago? Yes, Montague. The music, the cake, the present. Everything's ready. <laughs> there she is. Out with the lights. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. I'll answer it. Edwin. What is this? Yeah, what's going on? Light! Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Edwin, <laughs> what is this? Quiet, my dear friends. Lily, did you think I would forget this day? Oh, Edwin. Oh, this is the sweetest thing you ever did. Lily. Edwin, you're wonderful. <laughs> well, how are you first discovering it? Oh, to think that you remember that today is Agnes's birthday. <laughs> Agnes's birthday. I still can't believe it. What a wonderful party. Yeah, yeah. Well, after all, Agnes... Uh... Lily? Yes, sir. When is our wedding anniversary? In April. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just asked. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's start singing. Come on. Happy birthday to Isaac. Happy birthday to Isaac. Happy birthday. again next Friday for another transcribed visit with a magnificent Montague starring Monty Woolley, created and directed by Nat Hyken, and written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Anne Seymour was Lily, Perk Kelton was Agnes. Included in tonight's cast were Johnny Gibson, John Griggs, Art Carney, and Gavin Gordon. This is Don Pardo saying stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. Three times mean good times on NBC. This Sunday on the big show, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead crosses ad-libs with unpredictable Groucho Marx. Among the other big show stars will be Martin and Lewis, Gordon McRae, Joan Davis, and Judy Garland. For drama this Sunday, Theater Guild on the Air presents the gripping story Within the Law, starring Ginger Rogers and Lee Tracy. Have fun at Duffy's Tavern, then William Bendix on NBC.